embrace your freedom today. Say, I'm not that person anymore. God has changed me. As for me and my house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I am so thankful to be in God's house today. Thankful to have these missionaries here with us. Amen. Thank goodness for men and women who will answer the call. Amen. Who shall go? Amen. And aren't we thankful to have them here today? I want him to come and share the word with us. Let's get behind him today. Nice. Uh, can y'all hear me? Nice. Uh, I, uh, I'm very grateful and, and appreciative for Brother Wolf having us here. And uh, I thank each and every one of you for being here this morning. And, of course, we all know why we're here. And uh, we have one purpose of being here, and that's because of Jesus Christ. And so just for, just for a few minutes... If we could, however, if you clap your hands or, 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 or you want to jump up and down, however it is that you worship God just for just a few minutes, if we could just thank God and, and, and let him know how appreciative we are for Amen. the country that we have right now. Amen. Thank God, you, Jesus. We so love you, much. Jesus. God, I thank you for this assembly. God, I thank you for the truth that comes across this Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Lord Jesus, you're so good to us be in this place this afternoon, God. In Jesus' name, if you would just give him a hand clap. Yeah. Praise God. All of this, if you would just bear with us, this, this is all new to us as well. <laughs> Tra traveling around and, and, and lugging our kids everywhere and, and putting them through everything. And uh, I, I, I'm so uh, glad that they are uh, semi on board. It's going <laughs> it's gonna, to, it's gonna, it'll probably take a bit for them to, to get adjusted uh, but I'll, I, I, don't, I don't really uh, plan to do a whole bunch of preaching. Uh, I'll just I'll share my heart with you, and then, and then I'll get out of the way, and then I'll let God uh, do what he wants to do. And, and, of course, everybody has already probably been reading it. In, in Proverbs 25, 11, it says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold. And pictures of silver. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Uh, Brother Wolf, would, would you pray over this message? Amen. You may be seated. I'm just, I'm going to read. Last, last night, God really uh, started dealing with me, and, and then early this morning, and everything has kind of changed on me. I, I, read, I read this article, and I, it, it's from a credible source, and the reason I say that uh, is because I know this man, he pastors in Chula Vista, California. And he, uh, he, has, he has a lot of contacts overseas with everything. And there, there was an article that was posted uh, by, a young, by a young man. He's, a, he's a, like an international evangelist. And it says under, 
an underground church in Kabul, Afghanistan, is now at home with the Lord. I don't know if any of y'all have, have seen this or read this. Uh, we received news that the underground church in Kabul, Afghanistan, uh, has been martyred. Our friends have been in contact and met together last night in deep prayer. The last words she spoke were, we feel our prayers, we feel your prayers, because the supernatural boldness come over us, and we were singing in the spirit. Even the kids said, Mom, we will not deny Jesus. As, as they were on the phone, they heard screaming and gunshots. During this phone call conversation, now, my, purpose, my purpose here today is to uh, uh, speak about listening to the voice of God. You have to know, each one of us have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you've heard God tell you to do or go wherever it is that you are right now. You have to believe that God has spoke to you when you get ready to witness to somebody and you begin to befriend that person. You have to believe that God spoke to you and that whatever it is that you're saying to them will become life. We live, we live in, in a world of, 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 of despair and depression and oppression that begins to bring people down. You get on the news and you start looking at the news and, and reading everything that's going on right now. Uh, if, if you've had any dealings uh, at all, you know, uh, with, with family members that, that have been uh, in, in any type of military situation overseas in Afghanistan, uh, many of them are, are going through uh, tough times right now. And I believe that, that God sent me here today to inform somebody that he wants you to be listening to his voice. There's a lot of voices in this world that we can listen to. There's a lot of voices on the radio. There's a lot of voices on other types of, 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 of uh, 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 devices, whether it be on TV or, or whether it be on iPod or whether you listen to a podcast or whether you listen to talk show Whatever it is that you listen to, there's things that are buying for your time. There's going to be things that are buying for your attention. And whatever it is that you're putting your attention to is going to be just that. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. However it is that you're listening, however you receive that, is how you're going to act throughout the day. God, God has, has really began to interrupt our schedule. I was praying and I was, I was asking God, I said, look, just interrupt my schedule if there's something else you want me to do. Yeah. Well, in about two weeks, we received a phone call that we were, uh, uh, that they were, what is it that they call it? Reassigning us. So we first off were going to Greece. We were getting everything ready to go to Greece. And then they reassigned us to Belgium. So now we're getting everything that we can, all, all of our stuff together, and we're getting all of that ready so that that way we can go to Belgium. We're excited. Uh, when we started out two years ago, we asked God. We told him, we, we said, okay, God, wherever the need is, whatever, wherever you want me to go, that there's a need. I don't want to just go anywhere. We don't want to, I don't, I don't want to just go anywhere. I want to go where there's a need where people need somebody. Amen. Where, 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 where hearts are softened uh, in order for, for uh, 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 God's, God's power and His grace to be perfected in, every, in, in people's lives that we're going to be touched. Uh, there's a, there's a, um, in, I believe in Matthew in Matthew 14, I know a lot of you already know this story. And it's preached a lot. It, 
there was when Peter and John, they were the men on the boat. And Jesus had told them to go ahead and, 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 and set out. He went up onto a mountain. And he was up on this mountain for nine hours. It said that he was, he was there until the fourth watch of the night. So it starts from, it's the, the watches start at night. It starts at 6 to 9, and then it goes from 9 to 12, and then it goes from 12 to 3 a.m., and then from, and then from, from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. So it was the fourth watch of the night. He had been on this mountain for nine hours. Jesus had. He was praying on this mountain. Whenever he came off of the mountain, he started walking on water. He saw the ship being tossed. And all these waves were crashing onto the ship. And it said that, the Bible says that he was walking out onto the water. And it said that they would have passed him by. Jesus would have passed the disciples by of those that were on the ship. But one man cried out. It was Peter. And he said, he said, bid me come. He was wanting to know. They thought that this might have been a ghost. That this man that was walking on the water, they wanted to make sure that this was Jesus Christ. Was this that man that we have, have been so long with? Was that him as he's walking along this water? And Jesus told him one word. He said, come. He knew the voice of God. He was able to establish that that was Jesus talking to me. I know I can step out onto that water and start walking on that water knowing that I heard the voice of God. When you leave here today, I, I, I would ask while, while you're in prayer that you would pray for us, that you would pray for my family, that you would uh, pray for our kids, that you would pray for Belgium. I don't want to go anywhere at all without prayer. I need, I need prayer. My family, we need prayer. Please, if y'all have, have a prayer list of any sort, if you would put our name on there, please, and pray for our family. Wow. Of course, the story, while you're reading in the Bible... With Peter, he, he, he started looking at everything else around him. And it says that he started sinking. He began to sink. There are many, many things in this world that are going to buy for your time. They're going to they're gonna, uh, uh, pull as much as you can from who you are. From what God has for you in this life. And I, I ask... During, during, during that time that you would open up your mouth and that you would use that ability that you have, those words, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. It's fitly spoken. That word, Jesus, I need you right now. God, I need you to do something in my life. Lord, make it happen. Make this possible. When you, use, when you start beginning to pray and you start using words and you begin to use that spoken word that you have from your heart, you start asking God for needs. You start going to family members and praying with them, hoping, knowing that God will make a change. It's not just going to be words in a book. Amen. You'll turn those words into pictures. You'll begin to see gold in the lives of people that you're praying for. You will start having a relationship with God when you do that. I know that I'm here to talk about Belgium. And uh, we, we would have had, we would have had pictures, we have pictures of Greece, because <laughs> we, had, we had went to Greece, and we, we had pictures of the church there in Athens, and we, we visited with them uh, for a few days, and so right now we have not been to Belgium. 
<laughs> and so I was out whenever I was talking with 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 uh, uh, Brother Wolf earlier uh, in, in in the Sunday school building. He was talking about Greek and uh, I can concur. I, I had I had taken six years of Greek. Um, and so it, it the, there's a there's a lot lot of differences between between ancient Greek, which is uh, Koine Greek and, and modern Greek, but uh, I, I could pretty much, you know, read it to stay afloat. I don't know French at all. Just to be honest, I'm not even close <laughs> to having any idea. And so, uh, if you would just keep us in prayer, we're, we're going to try and, and uh, uh, we're, we're looking at Maybe trying to see if we can get into like a linguistic school there. Um, if, if, if the door opens up, that way we can be a benefit and, and not a hindrance to the work that's already uh, 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 taking place there. So there, there's, two, there's two places within Belgium. Uh, what are they? <laughs> Brussels. Brussels and Ghent. So there's a... There's a uh, uh, a church already there in Brussels with one of the nationals. He's the pastor. And so he's looking at starting a, a, a new work there in Ghent. There's nothing there. There's not, a, there's not a building or anything like that. And so we are, we are asking God that we will be able to, to commute back and forth. Uh, Lord, uh, please provide a car big enough for all my kids. Woo, Lord, my goodness. We started looking at cars, and these cars are, you know, real tiny. They're not American-made cars, you know what I mean? They're tiny. And then I was looking to see if there was any seatbelt laws. I mean, because if not, I'd just start packing them in, get one of those hatchbacks, and just start shoving the kids in, you know? We're going to pick people up for church. Well, kids, just get in the back of it. We'll, we'll be good. But I, I, do, I, I do thank God for, for everything that he's, he's, he's been doing in our family. There's a, there, there was a, uh, a U.S. president, and his name was, his name was uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt. So Franklin D. Roosevelt, he got tired of the same inane small talk and smiles that he had that he had to put that he had to put up with at the innumerable white house receptionist the receptions that he attended so every time people would get together he would he he started it kind of began to become mundane just kind of in passing and so while people began to shake his hand so one, e one evening, he decided to find out whether anybody was really listening to what he was saying. As each person came up to him, he extended, hit with extended hand, he flashed a big smile and said, I murdered my grandmother this morning. <laughs> People would automatically, automatically respond with comments like, how lovely, or... Just continue the great job. <laughs> Nobody listened to what he was actually saying, except for one foreign diplomat. When the president said, I murdered my grandmother this evening, the, nipple, the, the, the uh, uh, diplomat responded softly, I'm sure she had it coming. There's, there's something about your words and how you say them. There's also something about how you listen. How you listen. There are people in this life, in this world that we live in, that we interact on a daily basis, that we ourselves become that way. They tell us something. They impart something to us. They talk to us about a need that they have. 
and it seems like it might just go in one ear and out the other. Not meaning anything bad on anybody else's part. It's just the world that we live in. But this afternoon, when you leave here today, if you could, keep an ear to listen for God. Do what you can to listen. Because I don't, I don't want to get all excited about going to Belgium and then God not want me to go there. We've been asking. We've been praying. We've, we, we've, we've fasted. We, we had a business. We've sold, we sold our home. We've sold our business. In the course of us, in the course of us uh, uh, having the business, we started, my wife and I, we fasted for, for two weeks until four o'clock, asking God, if, is this what you want us to do? Within, with, within another week and a half, people started quitting. Hey, we have other jobs. We ended, up, we ended up with one or two employees, and we knew right then that God wanted us to shut it down. So that's what, that's what we're doing. We've shut our business down. I've, we've focused everything, everything on going to Belgium and doing whatever it is that we can in that city of Belgium. They're in that country. I'm sorry. In that country. My wife's looking at me. In the, in the country of Belgium to, to not be a hindrance, but to be able to uh, 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 help those that are there. And I'll, I'll, I'll end with this. I know I move around a lot. It's, it's 12 o'clock. I won't keep you much more. But... There's a, there, there's a book, it's called The Pilgrim's Progress. And inside that Pilgrim's Progress, there's a story called The Castle of Despair. While Christian was in this castle of despair, he had been thinking about how he got there. How is it that he fell into this trap, this dungeon that he was in, this castle of despair? And when he remembered, it came to him, and he remembered that he had no hope. Paul said, if you have hope in this life only, we are of all men most miserable. If you don't have, if this is all there is to life, walking out that door and living this life here in this world, if this is all we have, I'm miserable. I don't want anything for, I don't want anything that has to do with this world. If you would, please stand. The only, the only way that helped Christian get out of this castle of despair was to remember that he had hope. He had hope in Jesus Christ. God is wanting to talk to you today. And he's asking that you would listen to him. There are another, other needs just besides ones that we deal with. There's overseas needs. And if, it, if it's okay, it, you, you can stay where you're at or you can come to the front. But if we could, just for a few moments, and pray for the needs that are in this world. And ask God, speak to us, God. Let our hearts hear you. Breathe on me, power of God, come in and change me. You are all I need, Holy Spirit. Breathe. Oh, breathe.